All right. As I see that the camera is a bit off, um, you already noticed that my setup is a little bit different today. Uh, it's got a really, really simple reason, and that's that I only have the VGA Asia P cards and the platform I'm working on today, which you can't see because I have to use my second camera to point it at the screen, um, is uh, a Socket 754 LAN party board, which only has AGP. As I see, I'm dropping frames. So I'm gonna mess around with my bitrate a little bit. Um, so yeah, I have to go back to the old setup of just pointing a camera at a screen. Um, I do realize that um, AGP cards with the digital sys um, signal out do exist. I, I know there's plenty of them. It's just I don't have one um, available to me at the moment. Um, and I think my chat is buried here. Uh, let's just bring me back to the top. All right. Um, today's stream is going to be short. It's going to be on air only. And there's going to be a lot of talking. I usually, um, I usually cut off my rambles, uh, rambling uh, at the start of the stream because I have some m more or less meaningful overclocking left to do in that stream. Uh, I'll tell you straight away that there will be very little to no overclocking in this stream. Um, hey, morning, Mick. Thanks for joining. The simple reasons are there are plenty, but um, first of all. I am getting LN2 in in three days time. So there really isn't very much use in me doing anything right now because I can do it better with LN2. Um, so yeah, I'm getting LN2 on Thursday morning. Um, Bilko is coming around probably Saturday, Sunday. We're gonna have a bench session on all AMD stuff. Um, I'll have about 95 liters of LN2. I may or may not run some stuff sort of Thursday night, maybe Friday night, but basically the idea is we're gonna run two systems and we're hoping to just get through all the LN2. And it's gonna be all the uh, the AMD stages basically um, of, of Team Cup. Um, talking about te Team Cup, let's actually go there. <laughs> Uh, it makes a little bit more sense to talk about. Um, just need to find the actual um, little competition doc that I put together, um, which I should have had open, but okay. So maybe just to recap, even though everybody probably already knows, um, so it's break, broken down into DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, and 4. Um, obviously with, with uh, Bilco, we're just going to run AMD stuff. Um, so that's kind of the idea is that I'm going to have two, two deliveries of LN2 and I'm going to run um, AMD stuff together with Bilco on the first delivery. And then at some point more sort of in the October time frame, I'll get another delivery of LN2 and I'll just run Intel stuff. So uh, nobody can accuse me of being a, an AMD shill. I'm literally going to use exactly the same amount of LN2 on both platforms. Um, it just so happens that there's not many 3D stages or, you know, proper 3D stages on AMD. Uh, if, uh, if I look at the, um, the stages here in, in detail, I mean, we have... Um, in DDR1, we essentially only have this stage, uh, that's AMD. Of course, you can say, well, um, if you push AMD hard enough, you can compete in the a AGP one, but no, that's a, that's a Wolfdale stage um, through and through, really. Uh, 478 obviously is, is, an, is an Intel socket. So you've got our, yeah, we've got three um, 2D stages there a memory stage, sorry, three 3D stages, a memory stage, and then four regular 2D stages. So basically there's there's only 939 and HD2000. Um, that's 3D Mark 01. I just, I mean, that's just a rabbit hole. I don't want to go down. 
basically. So that's not going to be run on the weekend, essentially. Um, soccer day, uh, maybe. Um, it's it's not high on the list of priorities, but um, what I'm going to briefly sort of demonstrate today and what's going to definitely be run on the weekend because we have two chips for it uh, and we only have one board and the board is mine. So to, to get both subs out, it makes sense to bench it on the weekend, um, is the 754 uh, W prime stage. Um, so then it was Intel, 939 Super Pi 32M. Again, I don't know, I, I have a 939 board on the way, but I just, I don't have an OS built. I, I don't know what Bilko's board is, is what, what shape it's in and stuff. So that's a bit of a question mark. Um, frequency, memory frequency, again, that would be a 939 thing. So basically for DDR1, it's just Venice for the weekend so far. DDR2, actually, we don't have a board. We, we essentially don't have a board, um, not an AMD board at least. Um, and then there's stuff like 3 Micro 5. I mean, pff, don't have the cards for it. Um, all kinds of problems there. Um, physics, it's looking like from current subs that Intel is better as well. Um, yeah, D you have a DDR2 MD board, but we don't have like a top tier board as far as I know. So DDR2 is looking a little bit shaky, but where there's lots and lots of AMD stuff is DDR3 and DDR4. So um, I think AM3, Super Pi 32M could be a fun uh, stage. Again, we don't have, I think the ideal board would be an 890 board, but we'll see how, how far we can get on um, the Crosshair 5. Uh, what else is there? FM1, uh, GPU Pi 100M, really looking forward to the stage. Definitely running out on the weekend. The only caveat is um, there's an order coming in from China. Right now, I only have the 651K chip. Um, ideally, you would want to run the 3870K and the 3570K, I think, alongside. And I have both of those chips coming in. The question is, is it going to come in in time for the weekend? I really hope that it will because it's always more fun to get two subs out on a platform and really, um, you know, have everybody in who's benching that bench meet. In this case, it's just two people, but, you know, to actually like get, have a go at the platform and stuff. If you only have one chip and it clocks like ass, then it's not as much fun. But um, in either case, I'm looking forward to it. Um, definitely gonna run that. Uh, the 3D stages are pretty uh, Intel heavy again, but this one's um, forces AMD on both the CPU and the GPU. Um, we'll have to bin through some M3 plus eight cores there. Uh, and then the GPU will just run on chiller. So 290X, 290, whatever clocks well. I, I don't imagine we'll have time to get two subs out. I mean, we'll try, but um, it just depends. And then Fire Strike on the APUs, also a stage that I'm really, really looking forward to. I uh, have a 7650K and the top end previous gen chip, I think it's the 6800K. So whichever one of those two um, well, no, uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to run the 7650K for sure. Uh, it just depends on how good it clocks because I, I think there are a quite a few other ones in the team. So obviously whichever sub is better will win out there. But I really want to run the uh, 6800 as well because it goes full pot. So 6800K. Um, who knows? I mean, the, the, the R3... Oh, 7850K. Are those the big R7 or the small R7? So the 512 shader or the 386 or 382 shader? I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, we can, for sure we're gonna put out two subs. 512, nice. So we're gonna put out two, two or three subs there and then obviously whatever ends up sticking, whatever ends up being in the top three for the team, um, we'll be happy with. DDR4. Um, still a little sad that AMD is not going to make a showing in either of the first two stages. I am a fan of Y Cruncher. I am a fan of Geekbench 3 Multi, but they're just not competitive 
whatsoever in those stages. So those are a mess. Cinemench divided by, yes, PC Mark is coming up. Um, Cinebench divided by Core, definitely um, not an AMD sub, I have to say. Um, it would take quite a lot for it to turn into one because as I'm losing my mouse pointer and trying to, oh God, the setup. Um, <laughs> So Cinebench 15, for those who haven't looked into it, divide by core, so you, you want to go as many um, low core crowns as possible. And Intel is just so much faster there. So you want to uh, non-K overclock the Skylakes and the 7350K and then whatever else you can find, you know, um, 7700K or 6700K or, um, the 7740X, so, yeah, that's what it's called, isn't it? So anyway, um, if Ryzen were gonna make an appearance there, it would have been a quad core, but obviously, I mean, the 1500X or the 2500X um, are just nowhere close to Intel there. Um, yeah, and the other thing is the 2500X still isn't launched, so it wouldn't be eligible anyway. Hi Pro, thanks for joining. Yes, the Italian overclocking was a bit of a pun, um, a really stupid one. See this this chip right here, it's called Venice. That's the code name, so that's Italian overclocking. Anyway, um, yeah, a bit of a dad joke that one, but anyway, I'm sure you'll forgive me for it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, where were we at? <laughs> pathetic, I know, really pathetic. So PC Mark 7. Um, all I say there is AMD is competitive. So I am not sure whether uh, we will really get the time to run PC Mark on the weekend because it's just, it's a tw it's like a, basically a 20 minute bench. So um, that chugs a lot of LN2 and it takes a lot of your time and we want to get state. I mean, I at least want to get stages out. So I could happen, it could not happen. There could be like some, we might run out of time and I might have LN2 left over and then run that like next Tuesday or something, but um, it's gonna happen, but it just maybe not in the foreseeable future. Uh, run PC Mark on your 2600, I've, I've ran it. Um, I can give you some tips in like a PM, but uh, feel free to run it as well. I th think, I actually don't know what kind of a sub I have up on the 2600. Um, yeah, uh, that's an interesting one. It's been so long, it's been m months basically since I've I've run PC Mark. See, that's the other thing, I don't really... <laughs> yeah, you want, you want second gen. Um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't scale up to eight cores. I can tell you that much. So yeah, I have like a, um, top 13 score on the 2600 up. So, um, I can put that into that sub into the, the chat. Um, so what did I do there? I ran chiller. No, I just r ran air. So look at that sub. If you have, if it's a big mystery to you, just PM me. I'll. Uh, second gen can dice. Oh, because of the RAM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's another reason why you don't want to do first gen. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, that's that would be cool because um, obviously Bilko and I can only sub twice, so we need a third sub. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, all right, back to the overview. So PC Mark had fun pre-testing it, definitely gonna sub on LN2, just maybe not too soon. Um, Vantage, yes, not an AMD, not an AMD uh, stage for sure. Not an AMD stage, that's all I'd say there. SLI, I may not even sub for that. Um, 
yeah. Um, so APU, um, the thing about APUs is um, we don't we only have a twenty four hundred G, and the weird Vega knock thing. If we get two of those, then there won't be a, even a need for a twenty two hundred G sub. Uh, so again, that's kind of in the same category as PC Mark. May not get to it. Um, we'll see. There's a lot of question marks around that. I, I, I've gone through a few boards. I'm not really happy with any of them. But I, you know, unfortunately, I can't use my Crosshair six or seven. So I'm gonna have to use a pretty crap board, and just see what I can do. Um, that's why I just it's not it's not in the same territory as GPU Pi or W Prime. You know, it's you could really spend two days on that and not get anywhere. Aquamark, last but not least, definitely two subs in that. Going to be severely CPU limited. Um, me on my side, I have a 2600, 2700X. Um, uh, my 2600X is dead. So I have, I have two second gen chips. Uh, obviously, Threadripper is out of the equation. Um, Bilko then I think has another 2700X and a 2700 as well. So we're gonna bench through, you know, four or five chips, find the two with that, that will do the highest core and just get to tweaking. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun, I think, that stage. So yeah, the ones I'm looking forward to is 754, um, FM1, GPU Pi and Aquamark, I think, and PC Mark as well, but it's just, it's gonna be more of the sort of maybe run it in the last week before the comp or something kind of so stage because it can you can sink so much time into it that I, i'm sort of hesitant to start working on it too early which is sounds a bit counterintuitive but in my in my in my head it makes sense um all right so that's that uh so what have i done with this system um not very much, I have to say, <laughs> so far, but procrastinating bagging for the win, yeah. Um, I do have Windows 7 working on it, so I'm hating these black borders, by the way. I really have to, I like my, um, the fact that I'm in, in 1080p now. I think it does actually make a difference. Um, <laughs> Mansfield are in your area. Uh, nice. For anyone who doesn't know, Mansfield are the the LN2 supplier of choice in the UK, where Mick is. ES boards, yeah, for all the Intel stages. I'm sure your, uh, your Z370 LN2 would be really good. Um, yeah, so 754. Um, I have an XP install for it now. That was quite straightforward to get working but it's, it scores quite badly. Um, so I have a, st a stock run here, 66.5. Um, my XP install scored something like 77. Um, I'm, this is Windows 7 32-bit, by the way. So I'm fairly certain... Um, oh, you're, you're gonna do R15 and Y Cruncher. So R15 would be, I don't know what you have anymore. Do you have a 6700K or a 7700K or something? <laughs> what the fuck is Y Cruncher? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a 6.8G, nice. Um, uh, y Cruncher. Y Cruncher is a bench that doesn't give you points, but it's part of this this competition. It's um, again a sort of a Pi bench, but it's based on Java, so it runs on all the different OSs. You just have to enable the uh, the real time clock. Um, it's really memory heavy because it can do twenty five million digits of Pi, one billion, billion, and ten billion are the ones that are ranked on on Hyperbot. Why Y Cruncher? Yeah, very funny. 10 billion requires something like 43 gigabytes of RAM or something. You have to, so you have to load up your system with RAM, which is quite unique. Yeah, the binary isn't Java, but Java, the, the submitter is, is, is Java, the Hyperbot submitter, and you have to use the, this wrapper to, to submit on Hyperbot. So yeah, okay. 
anyway, yeah, I get I get your point. So the bench itself doesn't use Java, but you have to take into consideration that Java has to be installed on the system, and it's also going to use part of your RAM, um, and that becomes relevant once you're talking about a bench that's going to use like forty three three gigabytes of RAM, and you have to have, you know, RAM for your OS and stuff as well. Okay, so. Um, I have a working Windows 7 system. It was really weird. It needed to have all the devices enabled for it to even start the installer. Um, but this is 32-bit. The reason I tried to, I went with 32-bit is because I have some sort of suspicion that the reason that W Prime is slow on XP is something else. It's not 32 versus 64-bit because W Prime is, is pretty much known not to be a 64-bit bench. Like, um, I think on ha Haswell may have been the last sort of mainstream platform that people just run it on XP 32 bit. I could be wrong, but anyway, it's been run on XP in the past is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, my, my run seems to be pretty okay. Um, it's obviously there's still some tweaking to be done in the U S. Um, but yeah, I, I gained basically 10 seconds from 32 bit XP. Uh, professional obviously to Windows 7 32 bit so that's kind of weird but it's good to know um, the other big issue was um, I couldn't have subbed on XP anyway because uh, the FSB the, the BCLK this bus link and the HT link were blank and this is the exact same version of CPUs that I'm using it's even um, the, that's the other thing I wanted to test was what else is going on there so I'm actually using the 32-bit version of CPU-Z here as well, which is the same, and it's version 1.86. So I'm using exactly the same version of CPU-Z, and yet it had detection issues on XP, and it didn't, it doesn't now on Windows 7. Um, the other issue was, um, I, I think bus speed and HT-Link being blank are, are still HyperBot legal, but what's certainly not HyperBot legal, legal is the fact that when I was in XP, I could up the FSB. So you see that that worked. I could up the FSB and at a certain point the system would crash, which to me indicates that it's actually being set. But CPU Z, um, because it's not re reading the FSB, um, essentially was only monitoring the multiplier and therefore wasn't updating the clock speed. And uh, I mean, sometimes on a multi-core system, you can go in here and see the correct clock speed. Uh, you can just see it being applied only on one core or whatever, that happens sometimes. But here it literally wasn't reading the clock speed. And obviously once you get into LN2 territory and then you're subbing you know, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, that sub would be, get pulled pretty quickly. That's fine, Slinky would use that tweak, okay. But um, Pro, I, I'm not Slinky, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I obviously need, um, I think SPD wasn't loading either, uh, which isn't a, deal, a big deal because I don't need CPZ, uh, the SPD tab, but I obviously prefer it. Um, interestingly enough, the, the bias seems pretty new. I, I went on one website and it didn't even find this version. So that's kind of funny. But um, here we go. This is, for those who don't know, this is, um, I don't want to exaggerate here, but it, this is quite a rare chip. I was going to say it's one of the rarest chips out there, but then somebody is going to come along and say, but what about all the AM1 chips that have even less, uh, even fewer submissions? So this is a Venice 3400 plus on 754. Um, so 754 was sort of the budget platform for AMD. At the time, they basically had uh, 939, which was mainstream. Um, I think they went up to dual cores and stuff there and they had dual channel memory as well. It was still DDR1. Uh, you have a 9800 GT DDR2. Well done. Um, so DDR1 but dual channel and more fully, fe fully featured um, uh, motherboards and stuff and later on they had PCIe and stuff as well. 754 is basically the same core architectures um, but only single core as far as I remember 
only single channel RAM, which at the time even was already kind of a little bit unusual. Um, and then as far as I know, no PCIe uh, boards as well, just AGP. So I certainly have only an AGP board here. And this is um, a pretty high-end board when it comes to 754. That reminds me that my rig details are wrong. Um, just gonna correct that. So what has everyone else been, been clocking these last few days? Are you busy? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Makes sense, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's just such a weird platform where you're gonna always struggle to find what you want because one board will have one thing and another board will have something else because it was just intended to be really budget. Um, so rig details. No, I'm not on a rise in 2400 anymore. That's for sure. Um, so Venice, 3400 plus. Board is the deified N Force three. Oh, it says it in my mainboard tab. That's handy, isn't it? <laughs> um, two fifty GB. Um, I'm on Corsair TCCD. Um, the bench is W Prime thirty two M. Okay, that's updated. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, the funny thing happened uh, trying to install. You could make a seven five four board with a modern AMD chipset. Uh, no idea. So, um, clock chain auto detected. So that's good. I'm obviously in IDE mode, there's no no other option. So I should be able to BCLK pretty well in the in OS. Um, but that's about the extent of it. So I'll have to set all the minor voltages in BIOS and stuff. Um, what else is there to talk about on this platform? Oh yeah, when I was installing Windows 7, it actually gave me a pop-up saying, you're only on 256 gigabytes of, or megabytes of RAM. P please put more RAM in your system. We can't install Windows 7. So I had to add a second stick even though it obviously doesn't make the memory faster because it's still a single channel. Um, just to prove that, here you go. Two sticks in the system, still single channel. And no, they're not in the wrong dim slots. It's just that there's only three dim slots and they're all the same color and it's all single channel. Um, okay, let's, this is gonna be quick, but let's just, let's just rate. I'm all on stock bolts and everything. Um, this chip is really, really rare. Let's just to sort of drive home the point about how rare this chip really is. Um, it has got 27 submissions. And it almost looks like they're all from the same person. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all of the submissions. Um, SuperPi32M is the most populated ranking for this chip and there's three submissions. <laughs> and just to, as a counterpoint, I think the 6700K is one of the most popular chips out there. It's got 103,000 submissions. Granted, there's XTU in that and stuff, but um, that will give you some sort of idea of how incredibly rare this chip is. Um, at the time when I was looking for this chip, there was only one listing worldwide on eBay. So there was none on AliExpress. There was none on eBay Australia. There was one listing on, on eBay.com and it was for a, exactly one chip. Uh, I don't think that seller ever had another chip. So I'm glad it's the, it's the right chip because that's happened too to, to some people on the team. They bought a chip with a certain serial number and the serial number in the eBay listing was just wrong. All right, um, so like I said, there's not a lot of overclocking in today's stream um, because I'm going away. This will be the last stream for about a month, month and a half maybe. Um, I'm going on holidays, haven't been in a while. Glad to be sort of gone from everyday life and overclocking for an, an, a month as much as I enjoy it. Um, 
So I thought I'd have sort of like not a going away stream. That's stupid, but a last stream just just to like sort of update TC uh, uh, Team Cup and um, just bench on one more platform and then you'll have to miss me for a month, which you won't because <laughs> um, this is an overclocking stream after all. Um, so I'm going to just stick with stock volts because I don't want to ki kill this, the chip. You know, I only have a, a hyper 12, 212 on there. Um, but let's see, let's go. I think two point, yeah, let's go 2.5. So that applied, um, make a validation file. There we go. Nice. And, um, yeah, 66 seconds is quite long, isn't it? I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to not <laughs> um, minimize the window just to keep this running. Um, okay, so yeah, going to go away. So that's why I thought I'd have a brief sort of update stream. Um, and to prove that I have this rare chip, <laughs> which is nice. I haven't seen any other subs from anyone else, any of the other teams. But saying that, um, Warp9 and Overclock.net are, are known for their very obscure hardware. So it really wouldn't surprise me if they could pull a rabbit out of a hat. Um, yeah. So if anyone has any 754 knowledge at all please tell me before the weekend because we're going to be completely clueless as to what minor voltage to set um even though this is the 3400 plus is the top end skew in terms of venice chips um uh, the mobile chips went higher oh that i knocked off four seconds that's always nice um let's try to get under a minute um even though this is the top end skew, it's still a locked chip. So there's no multiplier control whatsoever. Um, so it's, it's gonna be all BCLK. Now the, the record for this board is 400 BCLK, which, you know, five gigahertz, that's, that, I, I would take that, but um, I don't think it's gonna be that easy. I think there's gonna be a lot of tweaking of minor voltages and things. Um, I haven't even checked how far, far up the V core goes. I really hope people don't run this board on um, uh, with a hard mod because that would um, definitely throw a spanner in the works. Okay, let's just screenshot that. No, not clock gen. Not CPU-Z. I thought I'd put, oh, this is a new OS. Um, just gonna transfer some files. Really nice to have a board that's so old that the USB drivers are instantly recognized. That doesn't happen any anymore on the new stuff. Okay, that took. That's good. Um. So we're at 209. Let's go 2.55. Another validation file. Think that this is W prime thirty two M and this is running this slow, it's just kind of incredible. Um, v core is also memory controller voltage. Weird. Memory controller voltage. So, what you're telling me is, it's not VDDR as such. It's like sort of like what VSOC is on Ryzen, like the voltage being supplied to the memory controller, but not the voltage to the DINs, I would imagine. 
Um, that tells me that you could blow out your memory controller. Um, is it just tied together? Because the memory, memory controller isn't actually integrated, is it? So, okay, that's weird. These old, old platforms are weird. You know what? I was actually um, quietly imp quite impressed by the fact that I could boot from USB just like that. Um, I really didn't expect that. Um, both both the X XP USB stick and the Windows 7 one uh, booted just like that. And that's, that's kind of interesting for such a budget platform that's so old. Okay, so that's 61. Um, yeah. Things, stuff is probably gonna start to get dicey here pretty quickly. Forty seconds. <laughs> yeah, so Pro was was running um seventy nine eighty XC W Prime thirty two M a couple of days ago. Yeah, one second. <laughs> it's a little bit of a difference. Cue the AMD versus Intel jokes. So slow to 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 write the validation file. If I get a hang, I'll, I'll just do the mem uh, memorization thing to get an under 60 second run. At the time though, the CPU would have demolished Intel. What was it even up against? I, I would assume the end of 478 and the start of 775. I mean, just judging by the fact that it's DDR1, I, I have no, I mean, uh, Celeron D, yeah, that's right. If, if it was up against Netbust, then yeah, for sure. Netbust was just garbage at absolutely everything. Um, if it was up against sort of the beginnings of, was it called Nehalem or, Ner yeah, one of those. Oh, Prescott, yeah, Prescott was absolute garbage. But if, if it was post a net bus, like if it was up against um, the first core architecture to be based on the um, the X sort of mobile design, so um, Pentium Mobile, Mo Pentium 4 Mobile, which I think was called Nerom or Conroe or something like that, then I would imagine that Intel was pretty good, good actually. Mid 2005. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. A bit of <laughs> overclocking history, I suppose. Um, I, if I get the hang of this platform, I could see myself benching it more often. It's definitely fun to go that far back. Uh, it's really the only DDR1 platform I have. First wave of 775, FX60, 939. Yeah, I, I've seen some of your subs from back then. Um, you know, another platform that I really want to try now is first gen Phenom. That's pretty wild because it's uh, four cores on 65 nanometer. So it's sort of 130 watt TDP or something. And um, I don't really have the exact right board for it at the moment, but I do have a 990. 50, 9, 9950 black edition so the top end skew of um phenom first first generation and they basically um are really weird because uh yeah they <laughs> they cold bug really low and all kinds of weird and wonderful things happen to them like that oh prime is useful is this a hang I think we're hung here. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's just quickly go to, into the BIOS. So, but uh, Pro, did you actually buy um, 
buy a $1,500 uh, chip. There we go. That's the that's the beautiful land party post screen. I'm I'm glad that that got into the stream. Even though it's hanging now, so that's not great. So, do you buy it to bench it, or did you actually buy it for a for a system, for a daily system, or something? Okay, I'm gonna have to do this with the camera, or attempt to at least. Oh god, that's worse. Okay. Um. Okay, where are our yeah, genie? See, this is like LDT downstream width. Um, okay, is there a way I can adjust this? No. Okay. Sorry, this is a pretty janky setup, but I just have no other way of um, displaying anything on this on the screen otherwise. Um, cool and quiet is off. Oh, I do have multipliers. What am I talking about? Right, this is a this is the multiplier. Okay, let's ra raise the multiplier and see what happens. Um, also, let's have a look at vid. See, oh, this is this is the back in the day where um, you would you would max out the vid. So what have we got here? One point five five, which is nothing basically. Um, and then you'd go plus 36%. Okay, so this is these are definitely LN2 voltages. <laughs> half molts for, oh, half molts for memory OC. Well, I, I'll just keep memory, OC, memory on stock anyway for this. Pay, I assume you mean pay. Mem is divided from core. Um, 1.55 should be fine on, on, on this cooling. We'll, ha we'll have a look. Uh, let's just go up half a molt and see what happens. So DRAM goes up to the, all the way up to 3.1. That's nice for other benches. Obviously, W prime is not really going to give a shit. Chip said I can increase as well. Uh, okay, I don't think, well, let's see, well, I had problems booting before when I disabled the devices, so I'm going to leave that normal. LDT to FSB ratio. Auto. What, what does LDT even mean? <laughs> LDT. I'm going to leave it on auto. If you tell me to change it, that's fine. But I'm just going to give this a try and see what happens. <laughs> Limp dick Tom. All right. That makes perfect sense. Okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few boot loops. I don't mind doing that. Um, it's, it'll be good to know. I think I need to disable audio, auto, um, focus on this damn camera. So annoying. It's not even on. Oh, it is. Lightning data transport later rebranded to hyper threading. That's, um, or not hyper transport, I mean. That's uh, impressive. <laughs> the fact that I don't know what it was called before hyper transport. Uh, of course, it's trying to boot off of the USB stick. <laughs> Jordan's nickname. All right. Yes, yes. I said I, I corrected myself straight away, guys. I said hyper threading, and then I said, "Oh, I mean hyper transport."
No, that's not what I meant. Hi, Lord, Lord Nickel, how are you doing? Still got that drought over there in Ireland. We've had rain here, so less of an issue over here than it was a few months ago. Molto bene, okay. That's a very Irish thing to say. So I do have multiplier control. That that changes a few things. Ah. Either it didn't apply. It did dub double reboot though. So maybe it, it did the gigabyte thing of just falling back to previous settings without telling me. I'll double check the BIOS. But uh, the multiplier didn't didn't show on CPUs out there. It's Italian. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Um, grazie. <laughs> Fuck. This is really bad. I uh, <laughs> I'm struggling to find Italian words, even though my girlfriend is Italian. So that's pretty pathetic. Lucky number thirteen. Molto bene. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Venetian. All right, come on. Show me a higher malt in, in OS, please. <laughs> Alice, I need <knew. laughs> Yep. Is that even going to boot? Come on. The suspense is killing me. No, it's not applying molds. So we don't have a no north bridge frequency. We have hyper threading. <laughs> um, oh, hold on. Yeah, okay. I know what's happening here. So in a in a modern bias, in a modern bias, the bias would the lockout multiplier is not available on that particular SKU, that particular CPU model. On a slightly older bias, I could imagine that it just exposes all the multiplier options anyway, but then nothing happens. So I think there, there, there must be some sort of a skew on this socket that can set higher malts, but this is not one of them. Um, let's have a look at, at all the different socket 754 chips. We can probably even figure it out. Um, 754, it was quite a small lineup. We'll get through them pretty quickly. I think there were um, non-Venice based chips that were like 3,700 plus or something. Yes, Harbobot, it would help if you loaded stuff. Um, okay. So I think the mobile chip um, works in most motherboards. And that has a max mod, oh, this is on LN2. Of 13. So 13 would make sense if that's exposed in the BIOS. Hmm. Uh, I guess 200. Yeah, 200 clock as well, 200 base clock. I'm trying to think which chip would even require higher, higher malts. You're wrong, Wilco. 
You're wrong. There's a 3,700 plus. Um, that's a 12. Oh. That's interesting. So it's... It's a slower chip, isn't it? No. It's actually the same speed as the 3400 plus. But Clawhammer, because it has more cash, was considered to be a 3700 plus SKU. So my chip, I'm just opening CPUZ, my chip had um, 512 kilobytes of level two, and the Clawhammer had one megabyte of level two. So AMD considered that to be 300 plus more whatever that means. It's just a figure that got out of their arses, but it makes some sort of a sense, but there's no my, main like There's no, no mo non mobile chips on the platform that do, um, that do more than 12 malt apparently, as far as I can see. And even the mobile chips, only go up to 4,000 plus because again, they must have more cash or must be considered faster for some reason. Um, so let's go to the 4,000. Yeah. Would help if I was on the right keyboard. Let's go back to Newark. Yeah, so one megabyte of cash. Okay, so yeah, that's the, the other 300. So. You get to 3,700 plus by going up to um, the one megabyte of cash. And then you get the other 300 plus by going up one malt. That still doesn't answer the question of why there's more malts above 13. None of these chips are unlocked. Clearly, none of these chips are unlocked. Can someone answer that? I mean, are we completely off base here? I mean, is it? Is that not even the multiplier? What else could it actually be? Let's let's reboot again. I I'm I'm curious now. What could that setting be? Um, I mean, what is even the purpose of having that setting there? I, I can understand why it would go up to thirteen because there's actually a chip that goes up to thirteen. Yes, but I I tried to set thirteen and it didn't apply on this chip. CPU slash FSP frequency ratio. So the FSP stays constant at 200. So that means this must be the multiplier. And it goes all the way up to 20. Yet there are no clock, there are no chips on this platform that have a multiplier of, of 20. Let's prove my theory. Let's go to 11 or 10 even. It's gonna drop the multiplier. So <laughs> I, I don't know what day if I were doing here. Why they, why do they go up to 20? Was, let's speculate here, was there at some point was like an FX chip or some sort of unlocked chip planned for this platform? And then DFI baked it into their BIOS and then the chip was canceled? Or what, what's going on here? Or is CPU-Z misreading the multiplier? That would require me to run W prime and see if the actual performance is different. I wasn't expecting this bench session to be this exciting. I have to say, we're discovering new things here. There we go. So it, it is the multiplier. It is definitely the multiplier. Um, and because I'm a curious person, I know my stock 12, 12x run was um, a 66 second run without the minimized tweak. So I'm going to... Yeah, exactly, Nickel. That that could be the case. So um, I'm gonna go up to 13 malt. I'm gonna run W prime, and if there's a, a clear deviation in speed, then I have to, I don't know, install hardware info or something, and see if I can somehow read the clocks. The other way of knowing whether it's actually changing the malt properly. Um, I don't think the bias can read it, but 
Um, I could try and up the multi so much that it doesn't post anymore, which would be another indication that the clocks are actually being set. Yeah, maybe, but that's that's a real issue because then I can get great benchmark performance, but I can't submit it for a team cup. Google and I have res have been researching hell out of it out, out of this lately. Nice. Okay, so unless it's set now, which I I very much doubt. Um, no, it's not set. Let's run W Prime again. Um, yeah, just interesting. These old platforms just so interesting. Um, I wish I had more of them. So the the curiously the the fan is spinning up more, but I think that's because I upped the the vid to one point five five. Hopefully, there's no sort of speed like scaling with vid, like that. There's some sort of phantom throttling, which makes this result slower but slower wouldn't be a problem faster um without actual increasing clocks that would confuse me we're finding all kinds of weird and wonderful things here oh your cut is here as well nice welcome Yeah, that's another idea as to, well, hmm. Yeah, let's give it a go after this. So it's a second faster. <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's one point, I think it's, it's about 1.5 seconds faster. But, uh, so this is reading the, the stock clocks. Okay, let's um, let's grab that and call it 13 mold question mark. Uh, that's quite a lot on an, on an old platform like this. Over a second. Um, Yoko, I, I think we're okay for Venice chips. Uh, we've got two here. Well, we've got three here and Mick has a ton of 3,200 pluses. Um, so the only one we don't actually have multiples of is th this one, the 3,400 plus. So, I mean, obviously you get whatever you want to bench, but I'm saying, you know, given that there's 32 different, um, uh, stages here, and a lot of them, we don't have even two subs for. I would say if it were down to me, um, play with something else. <laughs> you, you know what? If if you um, if you want to do Venice, do um, nine three nine Venice because they're they're much easier to get, essentially. So yeah, to root basically to root, I changed um, V core as well as multiplier there. So to rule out that that's a factor, I've now switched back the multiplier to 12 and kept the v-core where it is so this i mean it's w prime right it, it varies a lot between runs but i'm hoping that this gives me a comparable result Thirteen eleven, all as it should be Quite a lot of fun. Yeah, quite hard to find uh, boards. I'm trying to remember what where I got my board. This, I got this board for old school is best school, like months and months and months in advance. And then I didn't bench it for old school is best school, because, I don't know. There was something going on. I think I was I was really determined to bench other stuff to, just for ranking, which obviously old school best school isn't the best for just getting ranking points. Um, but yeah, now I'm now I'm keen to bench it. So 
pretty interesting. I wonder, I mean, 400 BCLK, I wonder what people are doing there. The problem with, we need a verbal equivalent version of child protective services. There we go, guys. A, f a fucking five second difference. So it's setting the higher multiplier, but it's not showing up in CPU-Z. This is the, I mean, can you think of a different conclusion? Like what, um, I mean, I can, I can fire up hardware info and see if that gives me the right clocks, but yeah, I don't know. The next text test will be, um, drop back down the, the multiplier to 12 and emulate a 13 mul multiplier using FSB. And if we then get the result we just got on 13 FSB, then it's clearly setting the mult. Now this is, so this is, right, this is just with the multiplier change from 13 to 12, which if this CPU is locked and fully locked and the bias can't do anything about it, is actually not changing clock at all. And I got a 64.952 there. And the previous one, oh, how am I misremembering this? Okay, 200 milliseconds. That's not so impressive. I thought it was like 61. Anyway, um, so we're faster on the lower mult. Never mind. Multiplier hasn't been set. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> one less question out of the way. Um, what are we? What else do we want to? Nightfall. Stop spam spamming symbols. Uh, okay. A fucking action center. Turn off, turn off. There we go. Um, so our heart. FSB time, yeah. So hyperthreading link is uh 803 let's see if that's really being set by that other multiplier we saw i think nightboard is fairly pretty fair it allows more or less everything through does the north bridge scale it certainly gets quite hot um, I am considering ln 2 it. Um, it depends. If I can get a block, I'll, I'll chill it. There's no such thing as a north bridge, though. There's only one chipset. But yeah, I've noticed that it gets really, really hot before. Um, if... Yeah, if between Bilko and I, we don't have um, a block that will fit it easily, I may just throw a, a pot on it and just, just, just lightly dose it with a bit of LN2 every once in a while. Um, because the last time I ran a 754, I noticed that as well, that it's just, it's so hot to the touch. Um, I think that even air cooling sometimes might not be enough. Aluminium tape, what's that? Aluminium tape. Yeah. I guess we leave this on auto, but um, actually for the, for the fuck of it, let's just see how we can get FSB scaling let's go one this is just a weird bit setting so let's go one and see what happens <laughs> can I turn the mic up um, let me just double check my levels Well, the levels aren't 100%. Uh, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mic as, as close as I can. Uh, my levels in OBS are already 100%. My levels in Windows are 100%. So all I can do is get closer to the mic and maybe talk a little bit louder. Um, that's about it for now. Okay, so it's booted into Windows. Uh, let's see what we've actually been able to change here. I'm guessing hyperthreading link, but who knows? Yeah, so, okay, so that other multiplier is basically just off of the FSB. Um, core is down. Okay, um, let's see on stock volts how high we can go on the on the FSB. And then I'm <laughs> hyper transport link. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm cursing myself now. Um, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Time to mash the delete key. That's I can't get enough of that splash screen. Even if I have 50 reboots on the weekend, I won't mind because I get to see that splash screen every single time. If, if W Prime runs twice as quickly without the splash screen enabled, I may still leave it enabled because it's so cool. Um, okay, let's let's try two ten. With the CPU multiplier lowered, um, that should not be a problem. You don't say Wikipedia. <laughs> What else does HD stand for? Uh, the stream is looking pretty pretty hard, but um, it shouldn't be too hard to find an AGP card that also has DVI out, and then I can adapt DVI to HDMI, and everything's fine. But just VGA, there's just there's no way I'm sp spending any time or money or effort into getting a, a VGA capable capture card. That's just stupid. Hindustan Times, nice. I love it. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. The fact bombs are coming out. Okay, 210. 210 is good. We've got our nice little Windows 7 install. Should be able to push. There've been quite a few good good subs for Team Cup already. I'm I'm impressed with what we, people have been putting out. To 20. For the Aqua stage, I don't know, man. On a locked CPU. Are you saying um just um well Aqua doesn't really have GTs. I mean, every test is a CPU test on Aqua. So can you elaborate a bit on what you're trying to test there? Because I would imagine that the CPU is nowhere near Wolfdale. Come on, Windows, you can do it. So slow to boot up. Well, <laughs> I have the chip that would be required for a, um, a Wolfdale platform. So there's that. I mean, no offense, but I would rather go find a 775 AGP board and uh, run like a, an E8600 or E8500 again, then <laughs> mess around with 754 for, for 3D benching. It would certainly be a very unique benching experience, but uh, other than that, <laughs> 230. 
an H87 board. H usually stands for non-overclockable. Is that also the case for uh, Haswell? There we go. There goes the bl the black the 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 post screen again. Quick run, okay. Well, if you run th out of other things to bench, I'm I'm definitely down for that. Now oh, that's looking good. The auto exposure isn't the best on this camera, apparently. It's so weird. Intel and then their market market segmentation, trying to do stuff that you know that um, gets circumvented in the end. Got to press. Oh god, I'm about to sneeze. Hopefully, I can mute in time. Maybe not. False alarm. It can be really slow to save these validation files sometimes, so I'll always check. Oh, M Windows Memory Diagnostic. Didn't know this was included. Can run Memory over 1600. Okay. Um, I, I, I struggle to think of a single CPU platform where 1600 memory is acceptable for memory heavy benches, but um, yeah, maybe you can run a bit of W prime or something on, on, on Haswell. I'm so tempted by that Z97 OC formula on the forums. I recently, oh, just sort of a buy and sell update. I'm, I'm after months and months of buying shit, I've sort of transitioned into the selling phase of things at the moment. I've sold um, my ASRock ITX uh, AM4 board because it was rubbish. Um, I sold my 7820X for 100 euro profit, which is unexpected because that's the kind of chip, that's literally the chip where I bought it, where I thought if I don't sell it in time before the eight cores come out on the mainstream platform, that's the one CPU I'm gonna get a make a like lose money on, and it turns out I sold it for a profit because it's quite a good bin, and I sold it to a fellow overclocker. Meanwhile, my Threader Press 12 core, where I had very few concerns that it would lose mo a value, it's gone. It's just lost half its value basically. Ten minute mute. Uh, don't know what you're referring to. My um, audio is still showing. Hopefully you mean something else. An AGP DDR2 LGA775 board. But the stage is DDR1 specific, so it would have to be that. Unless I'm misremembering things. Hyper is at 555. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> that will really get you places. <laughs> Let's quickly go to that um, stage. Acromark AGP only. So it's the DDR1 stage. Um, so AGP 8, 4, or 2, one, one video card, DDR ST RAM. And meanwhile, my boot didn't didn't go through. Yeah, that's the really weird thing. Um, this board, when you go ab above a certain um, BCLK, it will just not recognize SATA anymore. So that's the other thing. A higher multi chip. Higher multi than than what? E5. Is wasn't Wolfdale the absolute best on that platform in terms of performance? I mean, you need a good board with good FSB, but then once you have that, that is the absolute best on a LN2. I thought. 
Yeah, the fact that Windows 7 still runs on here is pretty nice. Um, let's let's see how how close we are to to actually booting here. I don't want to push uh, chipset because it's quite hot. I should really be actively cooling it to be honest. Yeah, the level of cross compatibility between AM2, AM2 Plus and AM3 and AM3 Plus is just insanity. Um, good job there. I hope AM4 becomes something similar where we have AM4 up till 2020, like they say. Oh, well, that certainly won't help. AM4 until 2020. Uh, maybe AM4 Plus comes out. I don't know if they're going to keep that naming scheme, but let's say AM4 Plus comes out sort of, you know, begin beginning of 2020 or end of 2019, and there's a bit of overlap. I should be able to lock PCI and AGP clocks on this platform, you mean? Um, so what's the trick again? Uh, do I have to increase PCI clocks to let, to keep SATA going? Or do I have to try and minimize them as much as possible? Come on, CPU Z. There's not that much detection to do here. So it's a nice two, three, five, a divider. Yeah, I'll have a look. Uh, say validation. Let's push clock gen until it freezes and then I'll um, go back into bias and look for those dividers. Let's try to go up to well, almost one gigahertz. That's nice. So what would that be? Let's say we get 250 times 12. That's three, three gigahertz. Um, but the tough subs, why are the tough subs even? Yeah, that's, I mean, obviously it still means, um, well, this is, this is water. Yeah. This should, shouldn't be too hard to beat. Uh, have to do it in, in, in OS. Well, usually you can increase quite a lot on any, in OS anyway. Okay. Let's go for the magical one gigahertz, 250. Give that another validation. Ooh. What is going on? This is like a soft lock. Um, let's go back to the system. It's like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's not quite crashed. But it's not functioning either. Yeah, for sure, Nickel. Um, as I said, I'll at least be chilling it. Win Windows will lock up soon. Well, thanks, Oracle, for, for that prediction. I'm not going to do it now. It's like midnight, close to finishing the stream. Okay, those are not the things I'm looking for. Memtest. Um, yeah, I'm not looking. Maybe it's under peripherals. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't want to break anything. I'm, I mean, at this point, I'm tempted to disable more de devices. Um, would disabling IDE help? It's not being used. Black, what's Black Ops? Yeah, I'm not really seeing any dividers here. I mean, there is an AGP clock, 66, but that's it. Same garbage. No, I don't want to. Okay, let's try that again. That was on March, March 2003. When are we benching next? Well, I'm going on holidays, so probably in a month's time, to be honest. But uh, I'm still keen to, to do um, 980 Ti on LN2 um, uh, SLI. Eight gigahertz binning. Yes, uh, I think we have, um, Quite a quite a batch of chips on the way. Another pot. Um, well, um, Randy, uh, you you have a um, a kingpin fat, and I have a kingpin fat. So that's all we need, really. Obviously, we have plenty of CPU pots between us. Cough, 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 pro, cough. Okay. Uh, Nickel, I'm going to the US. Bit of East Coast, a bit of West Coast. Like um, almost a month. So that's nice. What else can I disable here? Okay, fuck the, what's, let's disable the floppy drive as well. Maybe that's holding us back on our uh, quest for more BCLK. Cheap electronics. Yeah. Well, I don't think um, the people going with me would, be, would appreciate uh, wasting time trying to get electronics. I have, I have a, um, a mail forwarder in the US anyway. So it takes a little bit of coordination, but basically if I buy stuff that's not insanely heavy or I buy one heavy thing and then lots of small things, it all works out because basically like a two, three, four kilo package, they all end up costing roughly the same. You know, it's like an economies of scale there. So I just, um, my mail forwarder uh, lets me store stuff in their warehouse for up to three months, I think. Up to 90 days so for uh, last time I, I what I did was I bought a 2700x a crosshair 7 uh, a kit of RAM a Sandy E chip uh, this Venice chip I just bought tons of stuff and then after a couple of weeks when I sort of I was happy with the size of the consolidated package that I was gonna send I just pay the money for my shipping and it come gets sent here so the bigger hurdle, well, not the bigger hurdle, but one of the things that sucks about it is that um, since July of this year, there's a new law in place that requires overseas uh, retailers to collect 10% VAT, basically uh, value added tax um, uh, for anything that's imported into Australia. So my mail forwarder also complies with that law, obviously. 
AliExpress does now too. There's no real way to get around it anymore. Whereas if you went on a holiday, you know, you could kind of take off the tags and put it into your luggage and pretend you've had it forever. Uh, not that I'm endorsing that kind of behavior, but <laughs> it's a possibility. But yeah, it's only 10%. If you're getting a good deal, you it should be a good enough deal that even if you have to pay 10% tax, it's still a good deal. And that's what I usually do. I only buy stuff from the US when it's a clearly good deal. <laughs> Come on, that's a meme now. We're not gonna hear anything from the guy in Switzerland. Yeah, there's lots of shitty little settings here that do absolutely nothing, but nothing that I actually want. Let's disable audio as well and Firewire. Um, Camel Express. Yeah, 20, well, it's 23% VAT in Ireland on most goods and services. Um, yeah, it's only 10% here. But then, I mean, you can't really compare it because the social system in Ireland is completely different to what it is here and so on. More than 23 euro. Well, for Australia, it used to be that everything under a thousand Australian dollars of value was just completely import duty and tax free. So that was amazing. But I can see why they ended it because it put such a strain on the shipping system because so many people got bought so many things from abroad and the, the Aussie prices are really high. I mean, one guy once uh, made the point that if you bought the Creative Cloud Suite from Adobe, the price difference was it's it's a it's a big kit of software so it's quite expensive but the price difference between australian prices and us prices was so big that if you were to fly to the us pick it up in person and fly back it would still be cheaper than ordering it at aussie prices so that's pretty ridiculous um, i don't know if that's still the case now but yeah um obviously that's just nuts uh disable id was sata down here somewhere no I thought there was a SATA control somewhere. Put all the device, screw that. Virus warning. Where was that damn, damn Sala setting? Here we go. Uh, thanks for reminding me the, of the fact that the Aussie dollar isn't worth very much. That's great. That's exactly what I, what I want to hear. <laughs> So this is 236. I should have probably gone to 240. So slow to boot on this single core. That um, auto exposure on the camera is, is just not very good. Uh, that's <laughs> the only way of putting it. Um, um, services. Let's try that again. Taskbar, always mix up taskbar and start menu. Uh, Oh, conf. 
Oh, you're good. You're in um, Norway. I didn't didn't know. I, for some reason, I thought you were Finnish. Maybe you're Finnish and living in Norway. Is that it? That would that could be could be an explanation for the confusion. Norway is cool. I've been um, I've been there once around Oslo, Finland. Okay, so you're talking. But NOK is Nor Norwegian currency, so you're talking about the conversion ratio between Norwich Krones and Euro. Oh, you're saying, okay. I I was being really rude and for some reason had it in my head that Finland doesn't have the Euro. Of course Finland has the Euro. So, so there's Norway, Sweden and Finland, all three next to each other. Norway is outside um the eu but part of the european economic area or whatever that weird setup is sweden is in the eu but doesn't have the euro it still has a swedish krona and finland is in the eu and has the euro so it's three countries that are next to each other and they all have different setups but okay they can all do whatever they want it's their prerogative seems a bit weird but finland is on the right side of history well done. <laughs> no, Norway just doesn't want to uh, uh, doesn't want to share its wealth. Make um, we we've, we've just been, we've just been messing around with FSB and stuff. We also discovered that this board has the multiplier setting, but um, it doesn't do anything. You can set it, but it doesn't uh, actually set frequency. Um. <laughs> World War Two, jeez, that's going bad a, back a bit, isn't it? Look, you, you've you've got there has to be a statute of limitations on things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I just I'm I'm a fan of, I mean, okay, there's there's pro and con, right? Like, I think, for example, Maria Sharapova doped and shouldn't be playing tennis. Now, some people would say, oh, well, it's many years on now. Why don't you let her play tennis? No, I think she should have been forced to retire because she doped. So that's the sort of thing where I do have a long memory. But when it comes to countries, I sort of tend to, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, I suppose there's still people alive who remember World War II. Like I have an, a great uncle who's who t turned 93 recently. He remembers World War II. He was a prisoner of war in World War II. He remembers it very well. But I still sort of think, you know, to, what's relevant to us today is sort of um, from the establishment of the EEC sort of onwards is much more relevant than stuff before that. Uh, always go on about the war. Come on. See... I think the reason you talk about the war is because that's the last time Great Britain was actually great. You know, you're sort of nostalgically, nostalgically looking back at the the empire and the last time that Britain was actually relevant. Okay, I, I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll stop now. <laughs> now, Finland is cool though. Whatever they did in World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> you never said it wasn't the case. All right, at least you admit to it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, I don't know. Finland has, has been cool for decades now. So I forgive their, their uh, transgressions in World War II. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more try in OS that now and get a validation for it, and then I'm gonna pack it up for today because I I I really don't think it's a it's a good idea to be running this chipset passively. Kate Beckinsale, <laughs> where did that come out of? I I'm I'm very curious. Okay, so 
um, this is getting off the you know off topic a bit, but I, I'm curious to even contemplate what Kate Beckinsale has contributed in terms of arti- like movies that have artistic merit, because I, I struggle to even think of one. Uh, let's go to the filmography. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get banned from Twitch for um, going off topic, am I? So she's done. Oh, that's right. She's done the um, this series of movies, whatever they're called, Underworld. Um, so forty nine movies. Um, oh, she did a voice in Elder Scrolls Online. That's actually impressive. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> um, Republicans get in my vagina. A video short. Interesting. To say the least. White House. Oh, she was in The Aviator. I actually like that movie. Another Underworld movie. She's basically just done Pearl Harbor. That's an amazing movie. She's basically done um, crap Hollywood flicks and The Aviator. And that's that's it. What was her earliest credit? TV, 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 TV. Much Ado About Nothing and her role was hero. All right. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Kate Beckinsale. Uh, <laughs> I Interesting choice. I mean, there's so many great, great actors and actresses from the UK and bring up Kate Beckinsale. That's really weird. All right, let's go back to FSB. I think this is a safer topic for the stream. Uh, <laughs> is FSB scaling and stuff? Uh, 244. Um, let's see what our highest validation file was. Hello? Is it just slow or is it actually once again getting no it's it's having this weird issue all right i'm gonna have one more quick look at at high robot front page and then that's gonna be it for this stream uh it was fun um surpri- a surprising percentage of high percentage of OC content on the stream. I was I was planning for it to be more of a talking stream and planning stream, but um I'm really impressed by the 7350k. I have four of them and I would imagine that none of them are as good as this. Almost 6.7 gigahertz. Uh I mean Randy was talking earlier about having a 6.8 gigahertz 7700k, that's already a decent bin. And this is just a hundred and something megahertz slower and it's a 7350k, which we all know were fabbed somewhere in a sweatshop in China because they just have garbage IMCs, garbage cores, garbage everything. Um, So that's impressive. I'm hoping to still find the um, 6320 score somewhere because I thought that was really impressive. Um, come on, it's got to be here. Okay, let's just go into the stage, I suppose. I think it was overclock.net. No, not sure. Okay, then it was warp nine. Okay. Well, this is easy. Let's just go to uh, the actual chip itself. Uh, there was a new gold for, for Geekbench. I thought that was a really impressive. Yeah. Really impressive from Dark Gregor. 6.36 on a non-K. That's, um, that's something else. Being the power score back when he was still benching when he wasn't just a publicity department for 
Thurman Grizzly and um, Case King. 163 FSB. Ram way over 2000. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, so that's it. This is Venice. This is the Italian um, stream. I will not be streaming until at least the middle of October. Um, that's going to be live stream number 30. I'll probably pick out one of the Intel Team Cup uh, stages and work on it. I'll see whether I'll, I'll go straight back into it on an LN2 stream or maybe do one ambient stream first. But considering it's going to be the second half of, of October already and the comp ends on the 31st of October, I'm pretty sure I'm going to just order in LN2 pretty much straight away. So because I I will have to LN2 sub every single Intel stage. Um, not not literally every stage, but every stage that I've sort of signed up for or, or made plans for. Um, just to quickly go through it, my 478 board is, is very likely to be dead. Um, I don't think all my CPUs are dead. I know my RAM is good. I know my AGP card is good. So it must be the board. It's throwing zero zeros. It's a, it's a shame because it's an ABIT board and I used to love the ABIT boards back in the day. Um, but so yeah, that, that, that whole stage is dead. Um, I wouldn't mind giving the memory frequency a shot, but again, I don't have a dual uh, channel DDR board. I do have an, an Asus 939 board on the way, a decent one, like an N decent ish one with an nvidia chipset but uh no promises so that's the only um, stage i can kind of think consider maybe um subbing on ddr1 i i'll make an attempt to possibly buy an uh an appropriate amd board that would let me unlock um cores so that would mean I can give physics a try, uh, well not physics, um, I can give Cinebench 11.5 a go, which I'm really keen uh, because I actually have a few chips that are relevant. Um, 775 I'm gonna sub on the board you've already seen, the, the Land Party Junior board. Um, I have a ton of chips for this, this, this stage. I have two sixty four hundred pluses and a 6,000 plus. And then the 5,400, 5,200, 5,000. But obviously the 6,000s are probably going to win because of, I think there's something to do with, a, after a certain skew, the cache is lowered. And then also the multiplier gets becomes a limit, limiting factor. Um, yeah. Um, same board, save 775 board for 1080p. I have something ridiculous like 19 E7... 7600s or something so yeah maybe i mean no promises on all of these being on ln2 but i'll i'll put in a strong chiller sub at least yeah let's mess around on M am2 plus on the weekend for sure um yeah i don't have a g46 card don't have a hd3000 card um don't have a geforce 9 card this physics is, is leaning towards intel i won't have the right chips um 1366 still looking for a chip there it's incredibly hard to find a chip that isn't just an absolutely ridiculous price um like i was saying quite a few chips for the uh, well we're talking about intel now um 4k so i have a 3970x really keen to try that on on cold um my few pre-tests look promising um that's definitely a, a stage where I'll go be going all out on. I did have a 4930K on the way, but it's gotten kind of lost in the post. So I'm, I have a dispute open with the eBay seller. We'll see what comes of that. Maybe it still arrives in time for the end of the comp, but no promises there. Um, yeah, this, this stage, I have a few IV chips, no idea how good they are, and I don't have the card yet. So that's a definite maybe leaning towards a no um i have multiple 700 chips and i have uh, oh, this is outdated it's um it's hardwell 
I have a really good Haswell chip. So this will probably be my most all out 3D stage. I don't consider Aquamark DDR4 3D stage. I don't, well, leaving aside the APU stages because they're, they're their own thing. I know it's 3D, but it's its own sort of, you're not putting a pot on a VGA is what, what I'm trying to say. So the stage where I would actually consider going f completely all out is this one in terms of 3D. Whether I'll have the time for it, that's a different, different matter. Um, okay, DDR4. Yeah, 76, 75. That's what I get if I get stuck. I would like to get an extreme edition just because there's lots of hybrid points to be had there and stuff as well, but it's looking like I'll just sub a Z on. All right, these MOCF, still haven't had a look at it. If I can get it running, then for sure 6300 is getting subbed. Otherwise, I'll just be one of those guys, like everybody else on the team who's gonna just give the 7350K a shot on cold and Whoever sub ends up being the best, ends up being the best. Uh, White Cruncher, um, still got to do some more tests on hyperthreading. Uh, Yoss's tests were more in the direction of hyperthreading not mattering too much. Um, the brief few tests I did, um, I saw a pretty mild scaling on hyperthreading, sort of in the 5 to 10% range. But yeah, I would actually prefer for this test, for this bench not to use hyperthreading because then I could sub my 7640X, uh, which on 2D, on light 2D might, or sorry, yeah, on, on light multi-threaded might almost do 7G. It depends on the mount, it depends on all sorts of factors, obviously, but that would be pretty cool. Um, Cinebench 15, I'll, I'll, I'll sub because it's easy to sub because I can just wait for other people to sub and then whichever core count is missing or whichever skew is missing, uh, more than likely uh, LGA 2066, 20, uh, I'll sub that. Um, but yeah, uh, not, not too excited by it because Cinebench, you know, <laughs> I run that all the time. Uh, PC Mark 7, I won't be benching Intel. Um, the Vantage, well, GPU only, so Threadripper is no, no longer. At one point, this was a uh, this was a full full bench, so then Threadripper would have been in the picture. But now it's uh, just the GPU uh, score, so you're talking seventy six forty X above seven gigahertz uh, and nine eighty Ti again looking like a strong note and maybe because I know it's going to be tough already to get through all of these platforms. I literally have a plastic box, like a huge container full of motherboards that are all just ready to go for, for Team Cup. Like it's insane how many different platforms I'll have to go through. Uh, SLI, like I was saying earlier with uh, Jordan, um, we both have 980 Ti classifieds. So if we can um, fix up a date, uh, we put them both on LN2. And, and sub 980Ti is an SLI there. 7650 uh, and E60, yeah, four core. Um, okay, that's it. I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> it's ha it's half, well, half past uh, 12 at night, so I better get, get to sleep. But um, it's been fun as always. Thankfully, no technical difficulties like last stream, which tro absolutely drove me crazy. Um, yeah, basically, um, I won't be streaming for about a month and a half. Hopefully, I don't come back too rusty. Um, I'm really looking forward to just some time off, not only from overclocking, from work, from, from everything, from bad weather, whatever, you name it. Um, but clearly, hopefully, I can sort of come back rejuvenated and ready to, to sort of, um, you know, really sprint to the finish line, line Team Cup-wise. But obviously, I'll still be on Discord and all that, and I'm hoping everybody does, does you know, um, reaches their benchmark goals and while I'm away. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, see you all in October. Thanks for watching.